Hey, how are you all doing? So this is a little follow-up video to the video I did a couple of days ago on uh, the one meal that you can live off. <laughs> um, and I just want to put some context around it because, um, you know, I advise that, I would advise that you try and switch to a whole foods diet like that that's basically focused on protein. And depending on what your goals are, so like for me, my goals were, I've got twofold. I've got, um, I'm focused on lo longevity. So I do, a, like I'm into biohacking. So that's like looking at your overall health. So things like lowering your body inflammation to reduce your risk of catching any kind of terminal disease or anything like that. Really super important and keeping you healthy. Um, reduced body inflammation, by the way, is one of them things that's really good for recovery. So if you're doing a lot of training, um, and you and you lower your body inflammation, you just you just recover like that. So it's it's just better, um, and overall health as well. Um, and I could go into that. I've actually done some videos on on biohacking. If um, you want to have a look, I'll probably put a link down below. So that's one goal. The other goal is obviously to gain shape. You know, just keep lean. Um, and <clears throat> when, if you want to get in shape, obviously you've got different goals. All right, my goal is not to get absolutely massive. Um, because part of the biohacking is a large part of biohacking is calorie restriction, which goes against getting absolutely massive because, you know, you can't grow in a calorie deficit really, or it's very difficult. Um, so you have to know what to do and hack it and things. So I do sometimes, I am sometimes in a surplus, like when I go on a, a lean bulk, but I'm only like sort of three, 400 calories above maintenance. And obviously I've got a lot of activity at that point. Um, so my calories are never massive. They're never crazy. You know what I mean? Because the one thing about eating too many calories is um, you will put on fat a lot quicker. You can only put on a small amount of muscle, right, at a time. I can't remember the, I've not rehearsed for this, so I can't remember the exact statistics, something like a pound a month or whatever, but you can't put on a lot of muscle at a time, but you can put on a lot of fat. So when you go on a, uh, this is why I would always say go on a lean bulk if you're going to go on a bulk, and you only go on, you only want to add about three or 400 calories over your maintenance, so calculate your maintenance and then add extra. Um, anyway, back to the diet thing. Um, I would literally, so I have these meals, I've probably got about, six or eight meals that I just rotate. I do eat other things, like sometimes I do like a full beef or chicken roast and things, but it's always whole foods. I'm always cooking from scratch and I do have the time to do it. But I have these six or eight meals that are really easy to prepare. You can make them all in about 20 minutes and you can make them in small portions for yourself at that moment, or you can make them in bulk. Um, I just have them on the spreadsheet. I know exactly what macros are in them. <clears throat> and that might sound a bit nerdy, but um, if you're not in shape, because I used to be like this just a few years ago. You know, I've always had a love-hate relationship with the gym. I've gone to the gym my whole life. In my 20s, I was more of a meathead. I was into sort of proper bodybuilding, so I was a lot bigger. Um, and then, like, and then I was like, starting to sort of more go into sort of fitness by the time I got to sort of 30. Uh, and then I had a period from my mid thirties where I'd, um, I was working on the business. I wasn't really focusing on uh, the gym. I was cycling, but I wasn't really, you know, um, focused on the gym and my diet was absolutely appalling. So, cause I was, uh, traveling a lot. So I was just sort of eating, sort of service station dinners and all the rest of it. My diet was appalling and I could feel it, you know, inflammation went through the roof. Um, always feeling tired. You know what I mean? Uh, just on a poor diet, you just can't perform. And I put on a load of weight. <clears throat> so it took me a while. It, 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 if you're in a state where you're a little bit big or a little bit, you've got a lot of extra, extra weight and no muscle, even though I've got muscle memory, it still takes quite a while to get where you need. You can, you can shed most of that fat in a, you can do it very aggressively in a few months if you want, just by literally starving yourself. Right? <laughs> um, but then again, you've got to then if, from that point. So if you, if you're really big and you want to go on a severe, the first thing you need to do is just 
kill all the body fat, which you can do in a few months if you've got the discipline. If not, stretch it out to a year, but you've got to cut calories to do that. Once you get from that point, you've then got to, I, I would advise doing that just to get, see what's underneath. You might end up with this sort of skinny frame and then from there start building muscle. Now the building muscle does unfortunately take a long time. You will get some gains in the first year, but it's probably going to take you three years. So the whole thing could take you four years if you like, but 85% of those results are diet related, right? So if you really want to get in, um, so I'm like me, I just want the shape, you know, the V taper and I am actually in a really good place now. I mean, this summer I'm hoping to sort of cut up really nice and be perfect in terms of where I need to be. I could go another year and get, you know, the next level, maybe I will. Um, but at some point I'm going to reach a really good place where I can then just maintain it year on year and I'll be happy with that. So <coughs> I've got off track there. Back to where I was. So you start by reducing the fat. So you need to go on some aggressive dieting. So think about what I did. So first thing I did was so I had to cut out all the sugars and the rubbish and all the processed foods and things like that. And then the big one is uh, snacking, uh, cut out snacking. So my method for cutting out snacking, I just did uh, time restricted eating, intermittent fasting. So I just shut my window down to 16, eight, so eight hours eating window and 16 hours fasting first. And then I started to tighten that up. Now I don't actually do intermittent fasting anymore. That was just a tool that I did at the time. And what intermittent fasting does, you, right, the, the, there's some noise out there that intermittent fasting actually burns fat. In itself, it doesn't actually burn fat. The reason why you burn fat is because you're just not eating. <laughs> so if you think about it, it, what it actually does is it just shuts the time down and then you tend to eat fewer calories just as a result. So for me, Shutting down to the 16-8 meant I was no longer fridge raiding at night, you know, after I'd eaten my evening meal, that were it. I, I wasn't snacking. So it actually cut out those calories. It wasn't the fact that when you're in a fasted state, you're just somehow burning fat. It's still calories in, calories out. But fasting is a tool that really helps do that. Um, I also did some very, very aggressive fasts. So I remember there was a period where I did... Um, a few weeks where I was eating one meal a week right? and it, it was ridiculous or like I think it was like or something like one meal every four days and it was insane you know but it, it really worked anyway I got myself down to this skinny frame and then I started to train again and then once you get your fat off you want to go on like a lean bulk um, so you want to be eating whole foods. I was, I responded really well. Another thing that I did, um, once I went more low carb, I mean, I went strict keto for a bit and I really respond to low carb. It's not for everyone. And it's just, I love it for me. It really works. And I do eat some carbs when I eat carbs, I'll eat them at night. There's no point eating carbs in the morning because, um, uh, another myth is, that you eat your breakfast and then you go to the gym and you're actually burning your breakfast. You're not. You're burning the glycogen that's stored in your muscles from the night before. So whatever you eat at night gets stored in your body ready, usually in the form of glycogen in your muscles, so you can use it the next if you're training in the morning. So it makes sense to eat carbs at night if you're going to eat them. And if you are going to eat carbs, don't eat processed carbs. Eat whole foods like potatoes or something like that, right? And then... But this is what you could call carb cycling. <laughs> but I generally don't eat that much carb. When I do, it's I always time it like that. So in the morning, you want more fats and protein, a bit like what I showed you know, in the video. And also my uh, eggs video, uh, eggs and salmon. So just eggs, salmon, very, very quick meals like that. It's also on my video. I'll probably put a link down below to both their meals. Um, and then uh, what you've got to realize about this diet is if you're training, you've got a decent training split. So I'll probably do a different video on that. I do. Um, I've done all the different splits and I now settle on lower, upper, lower, upper. 
So I get each major, major body part twice a week. I never overtrain. Um, I explained it in some live streams I did with Chris. I rarely, if I'm doing lower upper in any session, I'll probably do three or four exercises, maybe two to three working sets each exercise. So it's very minimal, but I'm doing it quite frequently. So I've got good recovery and I'm always focused on intensity as well in them sets. So it's better to have intensity. Once you've got your training split dialed in, if you don't have the diet, I think I said it on a show, you can't train, you can't out train a poor diet. So if you get your training split, because this is what a lot of people do, they get they, they go in the gym, they're working really hard, and they're not, you know, you, you, you see them for like, I don't know, two, three years, and they don't really look any different. <laughs> and the, the reason is because the diet's not on point. So the diet is 85% of the results, right? So it makes sense to invest in that area. And all you've got to do, literally, is calculate your maintenance calories, understand a bit about nutrition, prioritize protein. Whether you want to go carbs or fats, that's entirely up to you. You could follow what I do, or if you want to, if, if you just like carbs and you respond to carbs, go for it. Because obviously carbs, they give you fast energy. One of the uh, downfalls of um, low carb is you haven't got as much quick energy. You know, it, it, it does take a bit off in the gym. Uh, you have to get used to it. I, I perform quite well on ketones, so I'm quite, well, I don't know if I'm lucky, it's just how my body is. Uh, but if you need carbs, that's fine. Anyway, focus on getting the right amount of protein. It's calculation. I think it's something like uh, uh, one gram every pound or what's that? Uh, two grams, 2.2 grams every kilo or whatever. Uh, you can go slightly less. You can go something like 1.6, 1.8 grams per kilo or not 0.8 on the pounds, not 0.8 grams per pound. Um, somewhere around that mark. So if you're, I don't know, you, if you're just a normal guy, you, your protein is going to be somewhere in the region of 150 grams to sort of 180 grams. I tend to aim a bit higher, like more like 200 grams, but um, that's easy. So if you look at that meal that I did the other day um, with the beef, that's like, you know, what was it? 65 without the eggs or 77 with the eggs. You, you're killing it with, you're massively hitting your protein goals that easy for just a few calories. And you think your overall calories might be, I don't know, two and a half thousand. <sighs> easy. You could eat that four times. <laughs> eat well over 200 cal uh, grams in protein, that one meal, that beef meal, we could eat it four times, well over 200 grams in protein, and be like two, 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 three on your calories, you've killed it, you know what I mean? That, and that's all you need to do. Really focus on those um, quick uh, meals that are whole foods, high protein, low overall calories. Um, obviously, if you're going into like a lean bulk, so I tend to, I'm kind of still on a lean bulk. You need to top it up with other things, so you've got, but once you get your key protein in, you just have a look what your calories are and just top it up, you know, with a little bit of something. Now, that can be anything, you know, you might just have some potatoes or something just to sort of top it up or one of them wraps or something, but even the wraps I don't like because, you know, you should be staying away from all that kind of processed food like that. Um it's just that the small. So that's how to do it. Hit your protein and then just play around with your calories. And when you go into it, obviously you want to go, when you go into a bulk, you're just two or three hundred calories over. When you go into a cut, you're just same the other way. So you're just going to uh, maybe three, four hundred at the most, four hundred calories either way. And you just play around with that. <coughs> and you constantly just, you're just cycling a little bit, but you're always staying in that same range. So you 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 know you're not you're not changing massively, but every year you will see. Um, if you're just starting out, by the way, I would say probably don't even go into a cut for at least two years because you know you you really want to be focused on growth. I would say <clears throat> growth without exceeding your calories too much because remember, well. This is my opinion. You don't want too many calories. It's bad for you. It's bad for your health. It's the 
number one thing for uh, longevity and health, overall health, is calorie restriction. So, yeah. Um, controlling calories might sound a bit nerdy and bored, it, boring. It is at first, but it's like a discipline. And I think when you're just starting out, you've got to do this. Just get an app. Um, I use that. Everyone uses that. My Fitness Pal. Just download it. <clears throat> Allows you to control calories, and you can build recipes in there. So I've got mine in Excel spreadsheet. I send them out to people. You can just build them into My Fitness Pal, and then just add them in. The reason why you should start by tracking calories is just to learn what you need because you might have to adjust it you know if you're putting on too much weight you just have to dial back and things so at first you have to but then after a bit you don't really need to so i don't really track calories at the minute i might do when i'm on a at the end of a really good cut but i don't need to because i've got that used to knowing all these meals that i make i just know what's in them i've got that used to knowing what's in them and i'm not you, you can almost like when you get really good with it you can feel how your body responds when you're eating too much or eating too less you just adjust it slightly um so it is like a discipline at first but eventually you can get past that and just really enjoy it and lastly on the whole foods you know <coughs> um it might be a bit of an adjustment if you're used to i don't know like a classic western diet um but after a bit you know it takes a while but you'll learn about cooking and you know the other thing is if you do go start to dial back on some of the processed carbs um you don't have to go strict keto by the way i mean and i wouldn't even unless you respond to keto i wouldn't even advise it what you're after doing is cutting out the rubbish processed carbs that, you know the really bad and also some of the white carbs because it just spikes inflammation and messes around with your um it's your insulin you know your insulin resistance which is is a it can be a real problem if you're just eating the typical western diet you've got to get it under control so um obviously i do like uh blood tests every six months my inflammation is like as probably about as low as it can get um but, and it's took a while you know but i've i've got there and when you come off that kind of rubbish western diet at first you kind of you know you might hear this about the keto flu or whatever um, whether you're going full keto or not you crave those bad carbs really bad but you it, it's like going cold turkey you, it's a discipline and you've got to get past it but once you do you never crave it anymore and it's great and you start to enjoy the food and you enjoy the results but yeah part of getting in shape and looking your best and all that stuff even improves your skin and everything it's sticking to those learning how to make those small quick whole foods meals that will hit your right nutrition that you want and that'll be 85 percent of your results so you know if you have started training in the gym you're not quite getting there it's probably the diet i would say um, so that's what you want to do. Um, if you want to email me, by the way, I'll send you uh, my a, a few recipes. You know, I'll be doing them on YouTube, by the way. I've done a couple, uh, and I'll be doing more of them. Um, I've also done someone uh, message on uh, Steve on the last video. Thanks, Steve, for message on the um, you know eating this four times a day might cost a bit of money. That is true, especially if you're going to go organic. I mean. Try and go organic with your protein. If you can't, that's fine. Just try and get high quality. Um, but yeah, it does. Eating, you know, sometimes I just eat like sirloin steak multiple times a day. It's expensive. Um, but I think it's worth investing in. If you can't, you know, if it's not always possible for everyone. Maybe top it up with like a whey protein. So I've got some videos on using whey protein um, and mix them in with coffee and all sorts i've got a coffee one which is really good <laughs> um, which is like a coffee frappe protein shake um, that's quite cool or you know you can mix them in with yogurts and different things like that um so maybe use that 
as a top up because you know you've got to hit your protein uh, that's number one otherwise you won't get in the shape that you want and then you've got to keep your overall calories low but just give it a go you know it's usually the diet that is the difference um so yeah look out for more videos if you have any questions just email me and see you all next time